David. Thanks for coming. It's my wife, Kristen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> nice day out. It's not raining like it was. That's very true. So you want to start? Sure. Come on in. Thank you so much, man. Now, when did you start working with Paracord? Uh, 2004. Okay. I was out of work, and I, I bought a book at uh, Barnes and Noble. All right. And uh, it was something to do. You know, I had to, went to the Army Navy store. I think 100 feet was five bucks. I started making some, and in 2005, I started joining forums and started selling some of it. There were only like a couple of people selling Paracord stuff. Yeah, it's like very few back then. Yeah. And it's now there's thousands. I know. It's it's. So it's really exploded. It's fantastic. It's, it's, it's interesting to me how fast it's exploded, though. I mean, 2004, 2005, it's not that long ago, really. No, it's not. And it's, things are just... It, I, I would make a paracord bracelet, and I'd sell it for four or five bucks. You know, yeah, I just, yeah. just to pay for the material. Yeah, you know, no, I get that. And then uh, the people I sold it to, a couple of weeks later, a month later, they were selling them. <laughs> <laughs> like deconstructing yep. what you're doing and bringing it, it on? It, it, Two, three people I sold to, they started making it, selling, and, and I was still selling them too. But I, I got burned out on trying to take orders, you know, and, yeah. and make stuff. Uh, somebody wants 50 pieces or something, and I got to spend the next 30 hours making making stuff till my, my fingers are cramped. Exactly. And I can't do anything. Exactly. Or getting other people to kind of then you got to train people and bring them in. That's the same thing with me. I, I never, I don't really sell anything I make. I give it away, or I just keep it. Because um, frankly, from my perspective, I see myself more as a designer. And uh, I'll be honest, there's some pieces that I've tied maybe three times. I tied it the first time that I discovered it or invented it. Yeah. The second time, I did a video. And the third time, I put it in a box. And then you move on to <laughs> something new. Yeah. I have to, because every week there's a new design. So if, yeah. I, if I get stuck or hung up on a single design, or to get, it becomes my, you know, my baby, if you will, and you just keep tying it over and over again, then my mind's not open to all the possibility of designs. Yeah. And so I kind of leave other people to kind of manufacture the stuff. And then for me, it's more, I'm more excited by the discovery of something different, a new way to work, a new yeah. way to, you know, rotate a tie. So tell me about, tell me about your handle ties, because these are freaking amazing, dude. It's, I mean, this is, that is so clean. Like one of the, the earlier ones I did, I saw Peter Decker's work. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he was working with uh, ancient Chinese swords patterns and stuff. And, okay. And I followed his, his tutorial, and it's kind of... I mean, this is just... This is amazing. I mean, it's so, so crisp and everything's tucked so cleanly. I mean, that is just going to hold. And then, Let's see, that see it's good. different on both sides because I, that was just my first time trying it. It's angled like it's supposed to be on one side, and then the other side is straight across. Oh, nice. But I like to like that because I like that too, actually. Different. Yeah, it does. I like that a lot. The gutted paracord and then use smaller diameter cord. I, I, I'd seen some uh, so wire is this, is this some of the micro cord? Yeah, uh, yeah, it's like mini bind string yeah, or trot yeah. line for fishing. And you'll do like a little, uh, little Turk's head. I'd seen some wire wraps, wraps on uh, some, so some swords online. And I figured if they can do it with wire, you can certainly do it with cord. Oh, absolutely. God, it has such a good grip, too. Can gives, you hold it a little closer to the... Gives it a... Beautiful. Yeah. Gives it a nice, uh, a nice firm grip on that. And then let me see some of your pouches. Which are pretty fantastic as well. These were some woven ones. I'd seen some basket weaving. I, I did some basket weaving back in uh, junior high, uh, eighth grade, seventh grade, or eighth grade, and uh, they gave us, uh, call it that. Uh, I can't think of the name of it. Uh, made out of natural fiber. Uh, uh, hemp? Or? It wasn't hemp. It's, it's, Is it like. Um, you have to soak it in water to soften it up. Yeah, I mean, I've worked with... I know the name of it, but I can't yeah, think of it. Yeah, I've worked with, like, I've worked with, because um, I've, I've done a lot of natural fiber work as well. I've worked with um, uh, Iris, Douglas Iris, and then there's Thule. 
And then there's uh, sometimes there you can use uh, sometimes people use bracken or sword fern stocks, and you can also use uh, bulrush. Might have been something like that. It's like, like that. huge long yeah. strands, and it's is it's it in coils. Is it? Is it? Oh, it's okay. it, it's almost like cord. It's almost like cord. And we soak it in water, and we'd have like a yeah. cut out. I made a, a magazine rack, uh -huh. and it was just had cut out some holes in it, and you had a few strands that were going up, and then you had to build it around and. I kind of shake mine like a woman's hips. And there you go. Torso. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it was on purpose. No, I think you know, I thought it said little. I, I wish I still had it. Well, you know, no. we're, you know, we're bare old men. I, it I comes, thought it, it comes cool. out in our art. <laughs> like, how did you go in and then back out? Why did you do that? You know, that's <laughs> cool. And then how about the, um, I've been seeing a lot of your intricate, like your Ian, micro weaving. Ian, Ian Fegan has a, his, his uh, shoelace book. Okay. And I, I found a copy for like four dollars on on Amazon, and I figured if you can do that with shoelaces on boots and yeah. tennis shoes, you could just throw it on. That was an already made bracelet I had I made years ago, and I just got that uh, zero point nine millimeter cord and went back and. Because this has inspired a lot of great work. I'm seeing since you started posting this, I've seen a lot of people. That's just one strand. Of, this is fantastic. Yeah, expanding on this idea. Which is such a cool way to accentuate, like even you know, this is just a classic uh, Solomon bar. Others come up and start doing tutorials, like uh, the pouch. After I made this, others put up instructables for yeah. the these and the cancuzies with paracord. I hadn't seen them done before when I first did them. Mm -hmm. I'd seen uh, like crocheted cancuzies and stuff, but I'd never seen anybody do one with paracord. So I, I gave it a try, and it cool. worked out. And you, you see all those old bottles that had the, the knot work on them. You know, at ships at sea, had to, so they wouldn't get knocked around and broken. But I thought, if the glass broke, you could still use it for something. You know, maybe oh, turn oh, it into a pouch. There or, you go. So I, I figured with the way. hitching and stuff, yeah. just imagine if the bottle's gone, turn it into a pouch with a cinch on the top. That makes complete sense. Yeah, because you, you did that. You did a lot of stuff, like the beer cozies and... Like for a multi-tool or yeah. cell phone. But, I mean, they stretch out. Yeah. No, this is this is amazing. I mean, it's really, it's really clean. I like the base of that, too. Yeah, this is so good. And I, I got one that I, that fits a, a soda can or it stretches out to hold that lantern. This over here. Vertical hitching. Oh, nice. Oh, there you go. Yeah. This is so great. Yeah, I did it. I don't know if you remember back in the day. I'm going to probably redo it with paracord, but I did the, um, the honey basket or the rope yeah. basket. And it's kind of a similar, similar but not the same uh, style of, uh, of basketing. Uh, but it applies really well to paracord, man. This is fantastic. I tried another one. That's with, so uh, good. I think some uh, Dale Morris, he does some crazy stuff like a Stetson hat made out of paracord. Oh, I saw him. Yeah, 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 I saw that. All kinds of crochet it's, stuff. It's actually, and it's actually shaped well, too. Yeah, That's I don't the know thing. how, I don't he, know did how he did that. Yeah, because if I did something like that, I have to say it would probably flop. <laughs> but his is like, you know, it's yeah, yeah, it's totally perfect. It's got a brim, it's curled yeah. and everything. I, and I, I tried a variation of it doing a... Somebody told me it's, what I'm doing is not exactly crochet, but it's close. It's, yeah, yeah. But uh, it's, it's chain stitching. Yeah. I, if I wanted to untie it, I could just unravel it, you know, like a sweater. Yeah, yeah, because all, it's all... Wow, that's really nice. Little county calm, they sent me that. Oh, that's fantastic. One of these weird little... Wow, oh, that's a nice one. Low and strobe. Oh, there you go. Weird stuff. You know, it's it's probably got a military purpose. Yeah. Because they are go they do government contracts. That's why they yeah. got a government number on the side. It's true. It looks like a looks more like a tent. Um, you know, of course we got you know uh, you know you can have to do a beacon or or a signaling. And but a, this a would D be like battery a, inside. Yeah, this would be a great illuminator for a closed, uh, you know, some kind of containment tent. Yeah. Something that had good shielding. You could really illuminate. And looks, uh, you know, Maritime. look at maps and do other technical work. That's so cool. I have to look into getting some of this. And then uh, I got to get you a flashlight torch, man. <laughs> Those are cool. It's literally like a flashlight, and it's got this heat element on the top, and you just basically point at it like yeah. any kind of fire. Start fire. It's awesome. As a flashlight collector, I think you'd appreciate it. You got to watch out for it, though. If that thing turns on in your house, you could burn it down. As a kid, I always had. <laughs> flashlights or lanterns and I, I remember the batteries back then would always leak out and all oh, you get acid burns when you go to take them out oh, yeah. where they corroded yeah. but wherever we lived I always had a flashlight so, I think it's cool I mean flashlights are awesome I'm discovering stuff so 
so this is your pile of active, active, active <laughs> working pile. Okay. Uh, I may not have used some of it in a couple of months, but it, I don't want to have to get up and go in the closet and look for it. You know. Yeah. I keep bringing stuff out because I got 20 gallon tubs in there with other spools of cord and. Uh, I figure I get it. Once I get everything out here that I need, I'll, I'll have it. You know? It's all within reach, too. So just, you can just work for I hours. I get up. I just lean over. So this is where you mostly tie? Yeah. Okay. It's in the chair. And this is, you were talking about earlier, this is, you're seeing the list of, <laughs> of, I'm leaning. of leaning over to, to grab your materials. That's fantastic. <laughs> and so when you, when you start to a tie, are you, like, usually thinking about it a few days in advance? Or? So, sometimes it might have been t five minutes ago I saw it on online and... Okay. I want to try it, you know, and I'll start tying it. Uh -huh. I might get halfway through with it, and oh, this ain't working. Take okay. it, take it apart, <laughs> and not touch it again for a, a day or two or a week. Uh, my hands bother me sometimes because I'm diabetic and I have nerve, yeah. nerve problems. Same so thing. Yeah. Uh, after three or four, like a uh, little uh, those, uh, a sailor's cross notch. Mm -hmm. After three or four of them, I can't do anymore. My fingers lock up. I hear you. It's I, like Charlie horse, but in your your hand, you know. So. I do a few things and then I might not tie, might not tie for a couple of days or a week. The longest I've gone since I started my blog in 2005 is maybe six weeks. Oh wow! That's the, the longest gap. I mean, now I still try to post at least once a month. Yeah, twice. But I, I remember posting five or six times a month. You know, yeah. That, that once you get to tying new things, you know, you one thing then another then another. So it's, it's addictive. Oh and totally. Just, but uh. I, I do try a lot of the same things like the gaucho knots because it's, it's like meditation to me. It's, it's, a, it's a puzzle. It's relaxing to get in the, the rhythm of tying it. I know what I'm doing. Somebody, I can watch TV. I'm not even paying attention. And I, I, you know, I'm, how did I finish that? Oh, no, I can't remember the last hour. But <laughs> Oh, man. You're it's just that's so similar to the way I tie. It really is. I have the same situation where I find myself kind of not only losing track of time, but sometimes, and I'll say this honestly, it's going to be wild. People aren't going to want to hear this, but I tie so much because you see I post almost every day. I'll post like a new tie every day. Yeah. That there are some ties that I go back to, and I don't know how I did it. Oh, I have I, to watch my own video sometimes. Like, yeah, yeah exactly, turn. exactly. When was the last time I tied a three by? I don't remember. I had to go watch the video. <laughs> Thank goodness we made them. Yeah, because I, I, I forget. That's I got knot books. You know, a lot of them show the same knot, but it's looking at it different. Yeah, perspective. yeah, yeah. I have to go look at the knot book to. Remember, when I keep doing it in my hand, I'm doing something wrong, what is it? You grab a book. I think that's important for people to hear, too, because there's this old school concept that if you are a skilled knot tire, that you just kind of innately know all these knots. It's, 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 if you don't do it for a while, you forget. You it's do. Like the Boy Scouts, you, you, had, to, yeah. you had to know uh, uh, 5, 10, 15 different knots. Oh, yeah. man, we learned them yeah. and we did them. But if, if, if I go a month or two without tying something, I got too many different yeah. knots in my head. I can't remember them. I, exactly. Some exactly. people have a photographic memory. I don't. I, I don't either. I don't either. I, I have to go back and look. But I'm, I'm glad, you know, I've got the internet to look at and the knot books to yeah. use as reference. Because if I didn't have them, I'd you know, be... You'd be, yeah, you'd be I'd scratching be, your head at your you'd house. pulling my hair out. Yeah. No, I, exactly. <laughs> 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 my hair... My, my, when I started the blog, I wasn't all gray, you know. Oh, of course. I mean, same for me. I mean, I'm going... I'm going pepper right now. It'll be gray within a year or two. But yeah, no, I think it's important for people to know that because uh, fundamentally, I, my theory is that people like ourselves, people who not only have a respect and admiration for the past and the historical ties, but then are also trying to come up with new designs. And in order to come up with new designs, you can't be too attached to the past. At the same time, you have to understand it. You have to have respect for it. You have to have knowledge of it. But if you're stuck in it, it I think it can block a lot of future thinking. You, you think you're supposed to do this as well. You don't exactly. you're not supposed to do anything. Exactly. Start with a blank canvas. Exactly. A, a lot of people think they're going to make a paracord bracelet and then take it apart out in the field and stuff, but it, it's, it's been kinked up and it's dirty and yeah. worn. It's, it's, it's not the same cord it was when it was new, you know. It, oh, yeah. It, it, it could break, it's damaged, salt, sweat. Dirt, oh, yeah. broken down the fibers, and it's going to be kinked up when you take it apart. So just keeping a, a piece of loose cord bundled up in your pocket, you know. It's, just it's avail yeah, available for use if you need it. I always find, too, like, um, and this is something I really encourage people to know. Because, I mean, the cord, of course, it has, its, it has its limitations over time because you do, like you say, sweat it up. You do, but that's what's cool about the creation process. You can, you can swap out over time. Yeah. So you say, well, I'm going to make another one. 
give it to a friend or have it maybe just have, sometimes I'll hang it off my bag, that kind of thing. But um, I always find it interesting in people who, and I'm not against people to buy, uh, buy bracelets because I find that super, you know, positive for yeah. people who make money from selling bracelets and people who get enjoyment out of purchasing those bracelets. I really okay, if they didn't know how to make it themselves, exactly. how are they going to know how to use it? I mean, exactly. If you can't even make the bracelet, yeah. but you think you're going to be able to do all these fantastic things with the cord. And, and if, if one of the and, breakdowns... And they got survival in their mind. Yeah. Thinking, they go, I will survive. I, I think they know the how to tie their shoes, maybe. But yeah. Do they know how to do anything else? Yeah. Or even tie the bracelet that they have. Yeah. You know, because I mean, if the idea is that you're going to carry it around with you, and let's say you hypothetically have all these skills with the cord, and you know how to use it for everything from snaring, you know how to use it to, you know, for tourniqueting, or to, you know, even the makeshift belt would be easy enough. But if you want to then take that material back and put it into a, a bracelet that you can walk off with, I always feel like you should know how to tie the bracelet you own. Yeah, yes. I, I, they got, you know, stories on some of the sites that are selling. Yeah. How, how did you use yours in a survival situation? And someone says they used their their bracelet to save somebody who was being washed away in a river. Yeah. I'm thinking that they took a 12-foot bracelet exactly. apart, and I know it's kinked up and stuff, and I think it's only 12 feet. How do you tie yeah. a loop and yeah. get it to somebody and then pull them to shore? And, and, and on a taut line. Yeah. You know, like a lot of times, and that's the thing, there's, I think I call shenanigans on some of those <laughs> stories, but... But that, you know, even in the, even in, because I'll be honest, one of the, the ways that I've come across using, because I work in the field, I work as an environmental chemist, but primarily I'm working um, as a contractor. So I'm dealing with everything from fixtures, we're doing installation of systems to do remediation of uh, like defueling areas and various contaminated areas. And so I'll have situations where I'll have a pump that needs a handle and I've got extra cord. Yeah. And so I make myself a handle or I've got a piping that I need a bracket for. And I need it just to stay stable enough so I can run to the hardware store. I got yeah. cord. You're going in uh, uh, through a door you don't want to shut behind you. There you go. Just yeah. A couple of feet of cord to tie the doorknob and yeah. keep it open. You know? Yeah. And so those, those quick sort of practical uses are pretty cool. Because honestly, uh, any other kind of cord just doesn't hold up and have the same utility. And it's never supposed to be used to support a life. You know, no, not no, your no, body no. weight or anything like that. Absolutely not. I, I always think it's utility cord. It's, it is. And, and that's actually the, to demystify something that... I think a lot of people have a misconception about is the idea of scaling a mountain with a you know a 550 paracord. The uh, this is a this is something that often people will say that you can use the cord for. And the truth be told, the amount you know this is a this is a static load of a 550. So this is this is a static load. Any stretch, any strain beyond that if, 550. If you bounce, yeah, if you one bounce one. boom, snap, you're, you're done. Yeah. And so even if you have a thousand feet of cord and you're trying, and, and you made rope out of it, <laughs> yeah, you, you got. 20 feet out of yeah. that thousand feet because you need something that's you know yeah. two inches thick to support you. If you think you might need to do some scaling, bring uh, bring some climbing rope. Yeah. That's the most important thing. <laughs> People go, I'm going to go out there with some paracord, and I go, that's that's pretty risky. Yeah. But um, or even to suspend yourself off of off a tree or something like that. Now, now some yeah. of the like paracord laces and stuff, they're pretty thick, and they got like yeah. five, six, seven, eight strands. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Or, I mean, uh, Jeff Wallace, uh, widget whacker. He got he made. Uh, duck call lanyards and stuff. He, he's saying you could tow a truck with this. Now, I, I bet you could. I, I got a couple of his uh, yeah. that he sent me, you know, because you're talking five or six strands and then you multiply that, you Absolutely. probably could do something like that it, with a braid or, uh, you know, or a even just a, Or even just a basic cording technique, like an Indian cording technique or tri-braided cord, like what you'll see with, um, like I have a video that talks about how to make uh, natural fiber uh, rope. Yeah. And I, I, I used uh, the Douglas Iris that we talked about a little bit earlier. And uh, Douglas Iris on its own, when you dry this material and you soak it and you get some uh, flexibility and, melt and you know, can work with it, it, it'll snap fairly easily. But if you take this material and you tri-braid it, you know, in a braiding, uh, braiding, and then you take three of those tri-braided and bring those together and take some time and effort, you can make some pretty powerful and strong cord. Yeah. And you can do the same thing with paracord. You could, you know, in fact, maybe we should show that. You know, just say, <laughs> if you really want to increase the strength of this, this is how you would do it. Yeah. little spool that with the red. Uh, County Com took my idea where I had made spools by taking old spools. Oh, down, nice, put nice. Them on there. I've had that idea for years trying to figure out a way to carry paracord on it. This is it swag. Went, I tried wrapping it. It, didn't it doesn't work. work you know, you yeah. can't, it didn't come off. I figured if I could get some kind of way to put a spool on there, and then I could wrap it, and you could just pull it right off. Yeah, this is, I, I, I think it, I remember I seen you show this. this I is made really, several different ones. How did you get that on there? So you had to crack it and then glue it back on? Yeah, I cut it. 
Oh, cut okay. it just, just enough to open it up so it fit on oh, there. Oh, there you go. Now, now with those, you can just wrap it straight yeah. on. Yeah, this is a nice, it's a but fantastic like with one idea. like this, two pieces of PVC and like Wilson, then you know what? Yeah. Tennis racket. Yeah, yeah. That tape is awesome, man, for tennis rackets. Mm -hmm. Oh, you know, the cord comes zigzag like that. I figured out how to, mm. I could do it with paracord. You know, it's, I did a video showing how to do it. It's not easy, but you can still do it and it, it won't unravel. You know, yeah. the ones with the sides are much better. This is so great. Yeah, the one they made, grab it over here. They made a, a spool out of Delrin. They gave me design credit, you know, because it was my idea. Oh, cool. Oh, and they, but started, I, they started making it. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Actually, I didn't, I didn't. So you started with this, and then they basically went ahead and did this. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. And Stelrin, it can, it can pop off the carabiner after it's empty. Yeah. And that's a low-graded carabiner. This is so great, dude. I had uh, military people contact me, where can we get these, you know. Yeah. We already have the carabiners, we want the spool, and I said, I, I, I don't I make don't them. Make it, I just design them. No. Well, that's one of the things, that's my next question is, uh, or actually my next statement's like. I, yeah, I mean, if I could have patented that, I, maybe I'd have made money down the road. Well, sure. I, yeah. I put it on the blog, because somebody can use it. You know? Exactly. And that's, that's the thing, I think, and this is one of the things I talk to um, people privately about, but a lot of your impact, um, and partially mine and others, are going to be felt for you know generations to come. Uh, a lot of times, the future doesn't necessarily hold on to the names of those people. Uh, we don't always remember who, where this stuff came from. Yeah. But to know that something that you designed, something that you thought up, is going to be held and worked with, or built on. Yeah, or exactly. Or utilized, or even maybe save someone's life because yeah. this is a more practical way of carrying cord. That's pretty impactful. It means a lot to me. I, I'm, how does that feel to you? That's what we're supposed to do. We learn yeah. something and pass it on to somebody. Exactly. I'm not married, I don't have any kids, but I've yeah. taught some of my nieces and nephews how to make the bracelets, you know. Yeah. They, and, and they were doing it in five minutes, and I said, thank you. It took me a lot longer than that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, they make you feel like, oh my God. I got some pictures downstairs of my dad uh, when he was in ROTC. Uh, my grandmother and granddad had him up in their house, mm -hmm. and he's got those shoulder cords. Growing up, every time oh, I was yeah. in my grandparents' house, I can always remember looking at them, you know. Oh, the nice. cords just look so neat. You know? uh, he had some, some like scouts, or, or uh, it might have been high school, or just he orange with the Solomon Mars. Yeah, that's right. It's like the military one. Yeah. Or even the bugle cord. Yeah. You know, they have those and such. And I, yeah, for, so for you, it's just a fascination with knots and kind of moving forward with the uh, the knowledge that you gained and kind of branching forward into new, new designs and what have you. Um, do you have any idea or any kind of thoughts about where we might be, like, I don't know, you know, 20 years from now? Do you think we'll still be tying as avidly as Somebody will, but it, if you look now, they're coming out with all these little gadgets, so you don't have to tie a knot. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. Just, uh, it's uh, something like my night eyes. I got some deal. You wrap it around it and hook it. No knots necessary. And I think, yeah. No, I don't like that. You I know, don't either. That, that, Knots are important. It's, they are very important. It's, it's something you learn how to do, and I, you're, you're taking something away if you just wrap it around. And what happens if that thing breaks and you got the cord? Now you don't know how to tie a knot. Yeah, exactly. Well, I always say that's like my joke about those who digitize all books are doomed to need uh, information on how to fix an electrical problem when the when, when the power goes when the power goes out. <laughs> yeah. You know, they go, oh, it's cool. I got all my books on my oh. And so the same thing with knots. It's like it's cool. I got this plastic thing that snapped. And now you have no skill, you have no knowledge, you have no ability to, to address the challenge that you've been faced. That's the bad or, thing with everything online. Some of those things have already started to disappear. Like, uh, not heads worldwide. The old yeah. phone went down when the server crashed and yeah. the old went out. Yeah. And a, a lot of those tutorials are gone. With the internet now, so many people in, in like a, the parachute groups, there's four or 5,000 members now in some of those groups. Uh, the largest one, and that much brain power coming together, you know they're going to come up with some new stuff. Just yeah. looking at what you're doing and, and uh, some of the, like the dog leashes and stuff. Some of them are pretty cool. I haven't, I haven't even tried some of them. They, <laughs> just they look one. too advanced for me. I mean, yeah. I, I think I don't, I don't think of myself as an expert at all. I just, yeah, myself included. I, I, if I can't memorize it, I think, well, I still have to go back. I'm, I'm in the middle somewhere, you know. And it's, yeah. If, if I had to do an exhibition, I, I don't know how many knots I could tie, you know, in a row, I just, I freeze up, I think, I probably know 10 knots, you know, I might know 50 knots. Yeah. I don't know how many different ones I've tied, but it's, 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 it's hard to keep it in mind. And well, because I think we're in that transition zone. I mean, really, it's this mindset 
that memorization and having this repository in our brains of all these knots, it, it, it makes us experts. And then there's the creative, uh, you know, you, you keep going up with this new exactly. stuff, new stuff, and so, boom, 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 and that's I think more the, and more. that's the difference. Like, and I thought this, I thought this, I get, I, I get frightened too, because when I'm around people, especially people who are historical knot aficionados, they expect me to have this, you know, boom, boom, boom of all the knots, and I see, I tell them I'm more of an artist, and you know, and so that's like telling me, can you paint a Picasso? Can you paint a Rembrandt? And the answer is no, I can't. I can paint something I can paint. Yeah. I can paint something new for you. But, um, and so that's... Some of them are like way technical. And it's oh, like, yeah. It's like I'm in I'm grade school listening to some uh, you know, <laughs> college professors going on. Oh, and in terminology, I don't know what the words Seriously? mean. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, somebody come in and ask a question and then they'll get down on them, and, you know, and I'm thinking, I'm not going to join up for them. That was, <laughs> oh, man, I, got, I won't even mention the forums, but there were some forums that I, I kind of got pushed out of because just because of that. Because some people are way too high and mighty about they are. stuff. For me, it was the it was the it was the innovative knot time. They just did not. They see didn't it. like it. Well, they didn't like it because it wasn't in Ashley's. And if it wasn't in Ashley's, it wasn't a valid knot. And yeah, and say that's not a knot. It's a braid. What? Oh, well, yeah. Ashley's had braids in it. Ashley's, exactly. Yeah, it's spool knitting, not the one I use. <laughs> spool knitting. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. You you don't have to, you, for me and you we're on the same page. It was like trying to convince. A fella in Britain, you know, like this, this is what's going on. Um, it's more difficult, to, yeah. and I understand that. I have respect for that. Um, it's uh, it's just a different way of approaching the the craft. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's been fantastic talking to you, man. I really okay. really enjoy thinking thinking uh, you know bringing us into your home and allowing us to see what you do and where you do it and how you do it. Um, and it just I I look forward to many more years of inspiration. It's uh, it's been pretty fantastic. That's like a big step for me. I I've had people can I come to your house and you teach me? No, no. <laughs> no, yeah, exactly. And <laughs> I'll put a video up. You know, yeah, exactly. I'll do a photo tutorial. <laughs> That's easier. And then, like we said earlier, it's so we can remember too. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. It's, there's so much you can still learn. You know, you've never learned it all. There's always more.